Hello everybody, welcome. It's so great to see all of you today. In this video, I wanted to talk about the subject matter of forgiveness and feeling like an outcast in some way. Most of us, all we want is to feel some type of worth and value to people, to God, to ourselves. But why does it seem like it can be a struggle as we live out in this world of ours? How is your self-worth today? Well, in this video, I like to talk about how Jesus came not for the healthy people, <clears throat> but Jesus came for the sick, for the outcast, for the lonely. And that's a good thing. So let us learn to turn it around and rejoice just in that. Praise God. You know, my husband, he was somewhat of an outcast in his family. He is the youngest of three sons. And growing up, he's always felt worthless. Uh, sadly to say, his parents just used him, manipulated him, didn't give him any sense of worth or value. And he just listened to them and tried to please them in so many ways. Well, he was just used to that habitually, just pleasing his parents, obeying what his two older brothers says, helping them out throughout the years. We even had them live with us when we first got married for almost nine years because he was the obedient son and they knew how to wrap him around his finger. So I always jokingly said, wow, Andy, I think you were, you were adopted in your family because you're, you really don't seem nothing like your brothers or anybody else in the family from what I see. But sadly, even as an adult, his parents would repeatedly say to him, you know, when you were a baby, we we're about to abort you. And I thought, wow, what a thing to say for your parents to mention that to you now as an adult. So he always felt very small and growing up, you know, he always heard all these negative things from his parents or from authorities. You're not worthy, um, you know, you're not good enough and you'll never amount to anything good. Why are you doing this or that? You know, you're not going to succeed and this and that. So everything was reg registered into his subconscious mind. And as we know, what goes into our subconscious mind up into the age seven, it stays there, it sticks. And as an adult, many of us walk around, perhaps not feeling worthy and listening to all the lies of what people tell us, all the negative things. So I just want to share with you that you are so worthy in God's eyes. God delights in you. I like to share what it says in Zeph, Zephaniah 317. Our worth and value is so powerful that God just knows the number of our hair and he has our name printed, tattooed on the palm of his hands. Listen to what it says in Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will, will rejoice over you with singing. You know, once my husband realized his worth and value in and through Christ, wow, he was able to stand up in his own two feet, not care too much about what his family demands or needed from him all the time throughout the years. And I'd like to share with you, last year, he actually had a fallout with one of the family members. It was a humongous big fight. He made a big scene in one of the hol holiday gatherings in front of all of us. But you know, he has no regret. He felt like a big load was lifted off his shoulders and he just felt free and at peace right now. And we have not heard anything from them because they don't need him. They never showed any love. And don't all of us want to feel just simply love and accepted? 
by others, especially the people that have hurt us in one way or another. But it's so sad and unfortunate. We cannot control another person. We cannot hope to expect that they would like us or that there may be some type of any kind of conflicts that was in the relationship that you can make it amends and for them to accept us in any way. It is what it is sometimes and it's so sad. But I'd like to share with you what it says in the scripture when Jesus just hung on the cross. And what he said when he hung on the cross in Luke, it says, Jesus, Luke 23, 34, Jesus said as he was hanging on the cross, when all the people was ridiculing him, they beat him, they offended him, they cursed at him, and they didn't accept him as his Lord and Savior. Little did they know that he, his love for him, he sacrificed himself just hanging on the cross, dying for their salvation. But as he hung there, he knew the minds of the people were all broken and we just all fall in one way or another. It says in James 3, 2, that we all stumble and fall. So none of us are perfect. And Jesus knew that. So this is what he said as he hung on the cross. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And I'd like to share with you the word forgive. And that word forgive means in the Greek language, a fear me, a fear me. That's what it forgives us in the Greek language. And the definition of a fear me means to depart, to detach. Like a husband, he is divorcing his wife, to give up, to send away. That might be one way that may help you if you feel like some way somebody has wounded you, hurt you, offended you, did something wrong to you, pained you, and it's just so hard for you just to let it go. Use Jesus as an example. Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Detach, abort. And that's what my husband chose to do with his family especially the one family member he had a fight with. And once he had that, he just feels liberated and at peace. And God, he knows his worth and value in God's eyes. It's like if somebody borrowed money from you, we're not going to say, oh, you owe me this amount of money. When can you give that back to me? No. If you choose to just let it go, you don't expect that money in return. So let us learn to just choose to let it go when somebody has hurt us or wronged us in our lives. I'd like to share with you Romans 8, 11, and it says, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. That is so powerful. So humanly, it may be so hard how can I forgive another person? How can I feel unworthy again? How can I feel like I am not an outcast anymore in my life? But Christ's power is living within you. And that itself is truly amazing. So <clears throat> we can conquer from our insecurities. We can conquer from our failures and our guilt in the Lord. We are more than conquerors. It says in Romans 8.37, but in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So once we know who and whose we are, God's children, we know we are more than conquerors in and through Christ, we have God's power and strength within us already. Let's proclaim his power and be able to choose to forgive, to be able to choose to feel our worth and value in ourselves in God's eyes. 
to choose to detach from all the negative words and lies that was instilled into our subconscious mind to just let it go and to replace it all with God's truth, his word and his love today. I'd like to also share with you Romans 8, 28. And it says, and we know that those who love God are helped by him in everything for good. So all things good or bad, God works it all together for good according to his purpose for those of us who love him. So maybe some of us may have gone through very sad, unfortunate things in our life, bad things. Maybe we made some wrong choices because when we are in pain, they say hurt people, hurt others. It's just so hard, but God knows that we are human. We are his creation and his great love is given to each and every one of us because he wants us to know we are more than conquerors in and through Christ. And we have so much value and worth. The mighty one who saves us, the warrior, he delights in us. He sings over us. How beautiful is that? So let us not just know it in our head, but receive through his spirit, his words in your heart today. And Jesus came for the sick, the outcast, like I said. So therefore, let us rejoice in the Lord. Instead, instead of feeling sad, let's just turn it around. Turn it around. I know I've been through some things personally that when I felt that I was just hurt and wounded, and I really knew it was not the other person's fault. Some people may hurt you intentionally, or maybe it's just them. They're going through their own issues, but they just vent it out, lash it out on you, all the ugliness. And it triggered all my buttons when this one person years ago just vented out all yelling and screaming, Something that she was complaining about, she vented it out on me. And I try not to take it personally. I took everything objectively, but just the fact that she used me as her garbage dump truck, wow, I can hear her words shouting and echoing in my ears. And it was sad because I loved her. I really cared about her for many, many years. But once she did that and she triggered all those buttons in me, I try to keep my arms distance, and sometimes it's so hard, and sometimes she tries to be nice to me, but I just kept my arms distant, and it was so hard for me, and it was a personal struggle. I said, God, I know that I should just try to forgive this person, for she doesn't know what she's doing, and I think it took about a couple of years to just say, okay, you know what? I have to work within myself. She has no idea the hurt or pain that she caused me. And usually I get along with a lot of people, but when people use me as a garbage dump, dump truck and shout at me and all of this crazy stuff, it's just not fair. But I finally found peace and I learned to just detach myself from her right up here and just to be kind and gracious, you know, uh, don't repay evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. And sadly, when she passed away shockingly in her sleep one night, I'm so glad I was able to have that peace. I hope that you may be able to have some peace today and just to learn to forgive others, to choose to detach, abort, divorce. So it may not bother you and hinder you, from moving forward in your life and that you may feel the, your true value and worth in Christ. When we don't feel so close to God, we may feel as humans that we want to find our worth in others. We want to get that love from others, the recognition, the companionship. We need somebody tangible there, but then they may not be good for us. God just wants us to rely upon him and to build that intimate, wonderful relation and that connection with God 
to continue to have that faith that Christ gave to us. Hold on to Jesus' faith. If you feel that you can't do it by yourself, call on to Jesus. I need your faith to help me along to be able to be set free to love, forgive, and to find value. So again, if you feel like you're an outcast, you feel lonely, let's turn it around and make it for good. Like I said in Romans, God makes all things come together for good, for his glory, for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. God bless you, and I hope that something I said may struck a chord in your heart, that you may be able to take some action today, to take those small steps one day at a time, that you may be able to be in peace and joy today. Like my husband, he is liberated and he has complete peace and he knows his worth and value in Christ. And that is a good thing. Life is short and our days are numbered. Let us rejoice in the Lord today. This is the day. Let us be glad in it and value and appreciate all our loved ones and all that God has given to us in his life, especially giving us his son, Jesus Christ. God bless you and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.